Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. We've got crazy news this month for the GPU market. We've got miners dumping GPUs, crushing the used GPU market. We've got some GPUs falling as much as 20% this month, while others are actually going up. And we're gonna do a new segment called GPU prices around the world. We'll take a look at what a GPU costs in a number of different countries around the globe. If you get value of the video, give it a like. It makes a huge difference, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. Before that, this video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows 10 licenses and that terrible activate Windows 10 watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 10 Home or Pro OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 25% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, you have a fully licensed Windows 10 for a crazy low price, which can be upgraded for free to Windows 11. Use the links in the video description below. Let's start off where else, of course, the brand new GPU market for NVIDIA RTX 3000 series cards and AMD Radeon RX 6000 series cards in the US. Then we'll get to some global pricing. We'll look at the used market as well. And and overall, we've seen in the new market in the US, we've seen some crazy, crazy price mixing. We've seen some models drop dramatically, and we've seen other models actually increase in price for some fan favorites. Just buckle up for that one. Some other areas of the market may have been bottoming out right now. So for instance, for the 6900 XT, starting off on the AMD side, 7% drop to $879. That's actually a pretty good unit. That's the MSI Trio unit. And of course, this is with a $20 rebate. Now remember those rebates, are they're here to stay for at least a couple months because some of these GPUs were ordered by retailers when prices were really high and then they took delivery and they can't sell them for what they bought them for. So they're going back to the manufacturers and saying, hey, you have to help us clear this stock with some rebates. So rebates just get used to them for a while. In the higher end uh, for AMD, the 6800 XT, 6800, not big price drops, four and 6%. So you'll love to see the prices continuing to come down. However, still quite high compared to the MSRPs. I don't know what is taking AMD so long to get those cards in line. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think they're losing market share because of it. That's just my two cents AMD. Then we've got the RX 6700 XT, still a great value at $485, but completely flat, no price movement. And it's it's the same 6700 XT out there, which is the mech with the uh, the MSI mech one with the $15 rebate. I will note that these have been scrubbed off of the AMD.com website. You could buy them, the reference model there for $479, which is the MSRP of this card. However, now we see that the 6750 XT has completely replaced it. So I'm wondering if they're going to phase these out. I think that would be a big mistake on AMD's part, unless they're going to bring those 6750 XT prices way down to at least what the 6700 XT is right now. At the lower end, we've got the RX 6600 XT. Came down 3% to $360. The most notable thing to me about this is it seems like the last bastion of scalpers out there has been chased out, which was at Amazon. In fact, the best price on the 6600 XT right now in the US is at Amazon for $360. This is the XFX Speedster Swift 210 model. And I love it that it's no longer sold and shipped by some crazy third party seller you've never heard of that's just basically a front for a scalper. And of course the best value GPU continues to get better value which is the RX 6600. Came down 8%, 8% to $289. Now 12% below its MSRP. Now that particular model I will note is one of the light models which uh, only has two uh, video out. If that's not cool with you then you can of course at Amazon right now you can still get uh, several other models for $299, which is, you know, still below the MSRP quite a bit for the Power Color Fighter or the XFX Speedster Swift 210 model. And then rounding it out, of course, we've got the RX 6500 XT. The price continues to fall on that GPU. It's GPU I do not recommend. If it gets down to $150, I'll start being nicer to it. $180, I'm still going to be mean to it because it's got too many problems with it, especially when you see what's going on with the used market. You'll see why is anyone buying a 6500 XT if that's what you're looking for. But right now, you can pick it up for $179 over at Amazon. This is the XFX model. XFX, for whatever reason, has decided to take the lead now on cutting prices. It was ASRock, uh, and then we had uh, Sapphire cutting their prices. Now XFX seems to be in the lead. All right, let's 
let's jump into the NVIDIA GPUs. And we've got some massive price decreases. RTX 3090 came down 12%, $200 discount from April to May. Not a bad unit, it's the uh, PNY version. If you don't like PNY for not that much more, there is for $50 more, you got the ASUS Tough Gaming version of it, RTX 3090. Big, big decreases on the 3090. I'm not tracking the price of the 3090 Ti. Let me know down in the comments if you'd like me to track it. I figure it's kind of a niche product. 3080 Ti came down 9%, about $100 to $1,049. Not a bad unit either. They've got a couple different gigabyte cards here. And then of course, they're throwing a lot of combos in here. So you can actually save, you know, 10, 15, 20 bucks on some combos. If you're also looking maybe to pick up some of these games like Tiny Teen Wonderlands. We played that recently. We absolutely loved it. Great game, by the way. And then the 3080, is I think a lot of people just have it in their mind that they have to have a 3080. Well, good news, $769 came down 6% from last month. I don't know how much lower this card is going to go. Remember, it's rapidly approaching its $699 MSRP price, but for that price, you got a couple of different gigabyte models, including if you want to do an all white build or a black and white build, you've got the Vision OC here, which is the white one. And if you don't like gigabyte, you want an MSI card instead. They've got the, the Ventus here. That one is for $770, just $10 more. But overall, you can see that we've got a number of 3080 models and the price continues to come down. 3070 Ti, no change whatsoever, but we don't really care. It's only a 4% difference to the 3070, but the 3070 had a massive price decrease of 19%, biggest of any GPU across the board. In fact, almost double the next biggest one, $589 down from $730 last month. And in my mind, this is a guess, it's to compete with the 6700 XT, which Nvidia knows is a really, really good value. So they're trying to make the 3070 even more attractive. We got a couple different models here. For 589, we've got the Gigabyte Vision OC one, RTX 3070. And then we've got just a number of other models around that 600-ish dollar uh, pricing. Pretty good, including, you know, not too much more. You can get something like the KO version, which I know is has a higher TDP. 3060 Ti, good news. 3060 Ti price finally budged after actually going up the previous month and not really looking like it was gonna go anywhere. There is a model out there on Amazon of all places. I'll leave this link down in the video description. The ASUS Tough Gaming RTX 3060, $549. Now, one thing I will note when I look at the models available on Newegg for 3060 Ti's, there are fewer and fewer and fewer in stock. And I think this is because the 3060 Ti is a cut down 3070. And at this age of the node, right now, the age of the node is so mature, they're probably not having to cut down many of those 3070s whatsoever. So they're having fewer and fewer supply of 3060 Ti's. In my mind, I if I were you, I would probably stop looking at the 3060 Ti, maybe look towards the 3070 for another $50. Not a bad price to pay, but I think we're gonna th start to see the 3060 Ti kind of fade from the market right now. And then of course, if you want a 3060 and you think it's coming down to MSRP, I got bad news for you, it's not. In fact, it went up 10 bucks last month, $10, uh, 3% to $399. I don't think this card's ever going down to MSRP, folks. So just buckle in. And there's two units that are $399 out there, but it does go up pretty quickly after that, 429, then 440, then 460 pretty quickly. So just something to think about. If you absolutely have to have an NVIDIA graphics card and you will not consider Consider its competitor, which is the 6650 XT now for the same price, which is a better GPU in terms of rasterization performance, then by all means, I would buy one of these now. And of course, we got the 3050, totally overpriced at 329 still, 32% over its MSRP. That's the second worst of all the GPUs out there right now. I'd take a look at instead the RTX 2060. There's one on sale on Newegg right now for $299. Once you get through all the promo codes and all the rebates, not bad, again, not competitive with the RX 6600 at $289 or even $300. However, if you absolutely have to have Nvidia, buy this over the 3050. Overall prices in the US continue to go down on at the high end and at the low end. It seems to be the mid range where we're stuck and Nvidia is slow. Nvidia is only seemingly lowering their prices in response to AMD. They're not gonna lead on price. AMD is leading on price. So kind of the market's going back to where it was maybe before the 50 700 XT launch, which is what we're used to. And just a quick snapshot of where prices have come. Obviously, we've come way down from uh, the huge peaks around November and December in a much better place, much closer to what we call normal. 
cards are at MSRP or they're below it, except for some of the mid-range ones that are stubbornly kind of hanging on there. But let's take a look at global markets and see where those are at. Let's do a segment called GPU prices around the world. We're gonna take a look at the four biggest markets to follow our channel. I looked, it's the UK, Canada, India, and Germany. I had wanted to do the five biggest, include the Philippines. If folks out there in the Philippines could let me know down in the comments, what are some online retailers that I should be looking at there in the Philippines that are representative pricing in the Philippines? Very helpful. Let's just hit some highlights. If you want, pause the video, take a look at the spreadsheet. We will track these over over time as well. But what I really want to get at is what is the difference between buying a GPU in the UK versus the US versus Germany? So right now, the average NVIDIA price is 17% higher in the UK than it is in the US. However, the average AMD GPU price is 24% higher than it is in the US kind of interesting. Means that NVIDIA GPUs might be a little bit more competitive in the UK. Some things to note though, if you look at the high end, that's where a lot of the price difference is. On the budget side, not as much. Over in Canada, Canada, I was shocked to find that the, there's been a complete reversal of the GPU market there. During the height of the GPU crisis, you couldn't get anything there. Everything was massively overpriced. But if you look, uh, look, look at all these AMD GPUs right here. They got the 6600 XT through the 6800 XT where the prices are actually less than they are in the US once you convert for the currency. Same with the 3080 Ti, the 3070 Ti, and the 3060 Ti. That's really, really interesting. Overall though, the average NVIDIA price there is 2% is higher in the US. However, the average AMD price is 1% lower than it is in the US. So Canada is doing pretty well. India, India is one of those markets that's really tough. However, I, I did spend a lot of time because I know I've got a pretty big audience in India. Yes, I, I've been hearing how bad the market is there, and I think we can see it here in numbers. The average NVIDIA GPU price there is 38% higher than the US. That's crazy. The average AMD GPU is 63% higher than the US. I guess I'll also start tracking like 2060s and maybe some last generation uh, cards. However, this is just a lot of work to put together every month. It took me hours and hours. I can't even tell you how many hours. But let's see where the overall pricing really is hurting. It's mostly at the high end. So the average AMD high end GPU is 93%, almost double what it costs in the US. However, if you look at AMD budget GPUs, I say it's only 43% higher, still kind of insane, but it's a lot less than it is at the high end. Germany, Germany's not terrible right now. It's about 16% over the US in terms of the Nvidia average price uh, for the GPUs and about 20% over for AMD pricing. I'm not quite sure why AMD pricing is so high outside of the US. So it's not higher than NVIDIA. However, it's higher relative to their US prices. Right now though, it seems like a lot of that is happening at the high end. In the mid range, uh, average price for an NVIDIA GPU, 13% higher than the US and 17% higher for AMD mid range GPUs. Let's jump into the used pricing because the used market has seen some massive, massive decreases because right now Ethereum miners are absolutely panic selling and dumping their GPUs as Ethereum hurdles towards proof of stake coming in August. That's the current date for it, August. So happening soon. And at the same time, the difficulty bomb has begun to go off. So the difficulty is ramping up. It's getting less and less profitable. Even with an RTX 3090 Ti, you're only making about a buck 90 a day. Also, the price of Ethereum is completely cratered, certain at about $1,700 per ether right now, obviously a lot of fluctuation there, but way down from its you know, 4,800 price in November, absolutely cratered, destroying the, the mining market right now. Miners just panic selling their cards. Let's take a look at some of the cards that have been affected the most. And those are the Polaris cards, RDNA, and the Vega cards. These are the best GPU mining cards out there, and it's no wonder that the prices have been slammed because they were way too high, because only miners were buying them. And if we jump into older NVIDIA cards, that's the Pascal and Maxwell version, so that's the 900 series and the 1000 series. Now these prices haven't come down as much as their AMD counterparts because these GPUs were not as good for mining. So they didn't see the huge price inflation. They saw a big price inflation, but not as much as the AMD mining cards that the miners wanted out there. So right now, anywhere down from about 18 to about 12% on a lot of these GPUs. However, the pricing, especially for something like, you know, a 1066 gigabyte, much more attractive. Although I would still buy an RX 580 over it, but at this point you could pick either one. Then of course, if we look at the Turing generation, so this is the 1600 cards and 
and the 2000 series cards. Overall, pretty good price decreases since last month. I mean, the 1650 uh, Super is down about 13%. Overall, I'd have to say the 2060 down to 275, that's down 27%. 2060 Super, these were good mining cards had huge inflated prices. They're coming back down to what their MSRPs were at launch. Not bad. I think these cards are going to continue to fall. I think it's not too long before we're talking about some of these cards in the $100 range, not the $200 or even $300 range. Well, let's jump into the best price to performance, both used and new GPUs right now. How do we do this? We take the Tech Power Up GPU database for all the used and new GPUs that are currently supported by AMD and NVIDIA through driver updates. We use the best used or new price, uh, as long as the used price is 40% lower than the new price, if it's available new, and we compare it in performance versus an RX 570. So we get a scale and we get a price to performance. Let's jump in. I created a new category this month called under $200 1080p gaming because there's so many used 1080p gaming cards you can grab now for less than 200 bucks. Budget builders, this is your cue. And I expect these to go much, much lower. Now look, some of the cards like the 970, it's a good performer, but it's kind of old. Save with the 470. I'd look at the RX 570 for $135. Now I do expect these cards to continue to go lower especially the four and eight gigabyte models is miners just sell off and sell them off and sell them off. I wouldn't be surprised to see these down like $70, $80 in the near future. The big standout here is the GTX 1070 to me. For $210, yes, I snuck it in. It would be a travesty to leave it out. Really high performance card compared to the rest of them. For $210, that's a good price. I'd certainly look at that. If you have a little bit less money to spend, RX 580, I definitely get the eight gigabyte model. And some of the other NVIDIA cards are coming down. They're just not there yet. Over for high FPS 1080p gaming. So now we're looking at any price right now in terms of great FPS and price or performance. Obviously, we just talked about the 1070. That's a good performer. The RX 6600, $289. I just keep beating this drum. This is a great 1080p beast, especially if you're into esports. You want a lot of frames, high frame rates, high details at 1080p. Really, really good GPU. I'd skip the 980, honestly, a little old for my taste. And frankly, for $200, I'd get the 1070 instead. 1070 Ti at 260, again, a little too close to the 6600 for me. But if you're looking to go up, I would definitely look at the 6600 XT. For 1440p cards, obviously the budget end, we've got the 6600 XT, great value. I'd skip the 1080 Ti, probably skip the, uh, the 2070 Super and even the 5700 XT in favor of the 6700 XT if you want to go up. So I either get the 6600 XT or 6700 XT, given the fact that they're brand new cards, great performance. However, I do think that the 3070 is really, really kind of hot on the heels of the 6700 XT. I think it was a good move by NVIDIA to lower the price of this GPU, make it much, much more competitive. The 3060, I put it in here just to show, show you where it's at. It's kind of in the wilderness right now. Then in terms of 4K gaming, if you want 4K 60 FPS, 3070s a really, really good card for that. Again, $589, we just went over that. But I think the clear winner in this one right now is the RTX 3080. This is a phenomenal GPU. I don't know why AMD is letting their 6800 XT, 6800 cards kind of rot basically at these high prices right now. They really need to start cutting those prices. 6900 XT, yes. Does it have more performance than the 3080 in rasterization? Sure, but it's close enough to the 3080 12 gigabyte or even the 3080 10 gigabyte. They really ought to bring that price down even more right now. So to me, the clear winner at the high end is NVIDIA. So what news is there on this front? Well, not a lot. Right now, all we're really waiting for on the supply side is Intel to maybe launch a couple of ARC desktop GPUs. They showed a single card off. Still don't even have specs for this thing. It's crazy. I don't expect this thing to come anytime soon. And frankly, at the desktop, maybe not even really ever. Maybe it's always going to be a paper launch with them shoving most of them in mobile, given that they won't be able to compete with what's going on with AMD and NVIDIA. Speaking of NVIDIA, everyone wants to take a rumor right now in terms of when those GPUs are launching. People are saying 4090 launched August. Someone else says November. Someone else says, no, it's coming before the 4080. No, it's after the 4080. All we really know is that likely in the fall, both AMD and NVIDIA are going to launch their top end cards. That's the Halo products, that's the 4090 for instance, and then they're going to launch their flagship cards as well, which is like the 30, the 4080 and the 4070. Will we get the rest of those cards like the 4060 Ti? No, probably not until 2023 for anything below that. So 
if you're waiting for the high end, yeah, they're probably coming. You're gonna have to slug it out with everybody else to get one. Don't, don't forget that. But if you're waiting for lower end cards, not yet. Other thing going on right now is that Ethereum is rapidly moving towards proof of stake. They're gonna ditch GPU mining. It's expected to happen in August as a result of several test nets that are yet to run, uh, one of which is about to start ASAP. So I would expect to see Ethereum miners continue to dump cards. The difficulty bomb has in fact started to go off. Difficulty is ramping up. I think it was almost at 15,000. It's almost 2,000 more than it was last month. So it's going up pretty quickly. Overall, profitability for GPUs is in the toilet right now, even with an RTX 3090 Ti, you're only making a buck 98 a day. Remember when for a 3090, you were making well over 10 bucks. It, it, those times are gone. And a lot of these GPUs, and this is if you're getting energy at like 10 cents a kilowatt hour, which is a pretty low rate. Not everybody's getting that. So if you're getting it more than that. You're probably losing money on some of these cards. And in terms of will another coin rise, I think we're saying no, Ethereum is in fact 98% of the market. Other coins as they uh, are going nowhere, basically, if you look at all these, it's all Ethereum, Ethereum, Ethereum. It's all gonna get crushed pretty much after Ethereum goes to proof of stake. So expect that tidal wave of used GPUs to come in very, very soon. I'd say within the next two months, expect to see an increasing amount of used GPUs driving used GPU prices down. Hey, great time to build a budget gaming rig. All right, so let's play everyone's favorite game. Should you buy now or should you wait? Well, honestly, I think this month is the easiest month we've had. So it's very, very clear right now. If you are at the budget end right now, it's a great time to buy. We've got all kinds of both used and new GPUs out there at relatively affordable prices. We're gonna be doing the i3-12100F uh, gaming build. I was shocked with uh, putting together the research for that video, how cheap you can build a budget gaming PC for right now. No spoilers on that. You'll have to stay subscribed in order to see that one. And if you're at the mid range, I think it's a good time to also buy. Look, the 3070 coming down more into the mid range, I think is great. I'd love to see that GPU come down even a little bit more. But I'm not sure. I think NVIDIA is comfortable being about 100 bucks more than AMD on any given GPU at the similar uh, at the similar performance level. So with GPU prices kind of flattening out in a lot of ways at the high end, I think you're waiting. Uh, you're gonna look. It's all, June by the time this comes out. It'll be middle of June. It's probably only going to be another three or four months until we at least know when these GPUs are launching. You'll probably have one in hand if you really want one by the end of the year, even with the market craziness. So I don't see a big uh, reason to run out and buy, you know, a 3090 or a 6900 XT. Though the 6900 XT, you know, look, they could continue to cut those prices. They could make them more interesting for mid-range buyers. But I think if you're somebody who wants super high-end performance, no, I think, of course, you're waiting to the end of the year. You're waiting to see what's next. This generation has been very, very challenged in terms of pricing and availability. I think it's left a bad taste in people's mouth. And I think a lot of people are ready to turn the page to a new GPU generation that we can get some hype and some excitement for because after all, we do this to have fun. We don't do this to sit around and feel bitter about GPU prices, right? We do this to have fun. Let's have some fun when those launch. But right now, I think it's pretty cut and dry. Folks at the mid range and lower, go ahead, build now. You're not, nothing new is coming for you until 2023. And I think prices are about where they're gonna be. And at the high end, I think you're waiting for the next generation. Thank you for joining us on this month's GPU market update. Remember, if you get value of the video, give it a like, it makes a huge difference, especially this guy right here. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon. That way you get notified when we release cool content. If you're looking for an even cooler video about GPUs and what's the best for you, we go through the best GPU for gaming 2022. I'm gonna leave it right here. Check it out. It's got everything that you need to know to make the best buying decision on the best GPU for gaming in 2022. And we'll catch you on the next one.